Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today I'm going to share with you how I decorate the digital downloads from Calico Collage. This is Fairy Garden, and I'll show you how to put a journal together, how to create the cover and everything. When I print my digital images, I print them on a laser printer. In this case, I did use color laser paper on my printer. Sometimes I just use regular copy weight paper, but this image is just made me want to use a little bit better paper because they're so beautiful. And then on the back side, I print lines so they have journaling space. The next thing I'm gonna do is get my Tattered Angels Glimmerous and stencils and spray the back side. I have a couple of stencils that I made on my Cricut. This one is Dragonflies, and I used transparency film. And what I'm going to do is lay my paper in the spray box, lay the stencil on top, spray, and then I'm going to lay another piece of paper on top to mop up all of the spray. I'll show you one moment. I have some Italian Sunset Craft and Walnut Gold, as well as Taffy. And I may not use all of these colors on every page, but I do plan to try to mix them up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm missing one. Oh, here's one. I also have Precious Metal. So I'm going to start with Precious Metal. It has a really pretty, soft, pink, pearlescent look to it. And I just really like the color. So I'm just going to spray this all over. And I'm going to do a little bit of the Italian Sunset. Not a lot, just a little, and a little bit of the taffy, because I want some pink. And let's go with some walnut gold. So it'll give a vintage feel. And then while that's still wet, I'm going to take another journaling page and just lay it on top and let it soak up any extra glimmer mist that's resting on top of the stencil. So it makes this on the back side. Isn't that pretty? Some soft colors. And then here is the other one. I'm going to put my next page in. I've got a different stencil. This is another one that I made on my Cricut using transparency film. And I'm just going to do the same basic idea. Just spray this down. So that's how it turned out on the back side of there. And there's this one. I love this stencil a lot, so I use it a lot. <laughs> I'm going to use it again. I have a few stamps here that I think I want to use. So the next thing that I like to do, just so I know where the center of my page is, is I'll fold my pages in half and just lightly crease them and set them aside so I'll have them ready. I have some stamps laid out here, and I'm just going to go in and stamp a couple of things on each page. I've got some Distress Ink Vintage Photo. Uh, this is a stamp I picked up a while back. It is Star Confetti. I just thought it was kind of a neat look, and I like the saying that I found that I want to use with it. And this says, Reach for the moon. Even if you miss, you will land among the stars. I'm going to use the same vintage photo. I'm a little concerned this is a new stamp. And I'm going to place this right below the stars. I like these butterflies, so I'm going to place... Yeah, let's put the... No, I'm going to use a bird. I'm going to use the bird over here. I've got this phrase, aspire to be, and then I like to use amazing. And then I've got a different dragonfly. I have some butterflies here. It had another color on it, so it kind of blended it. That's okay, I like it. This says, the best is yet to come. Got another dragonfly. And then I have these wings. They're little angel wings, but I think they go well with fairies as well. And then it says, she spread her wings. A couple little birds here, so we'll do this hummingbird. And another bird. I've got this phrase, live, laugh, love, that I thought would be pretty in here as well. And then I have another dragon, or another butterfly. 
Here are the pages that I have made. I think I have 16 of them. So now what I'm going to do is basically set this up to be three signatures with the pages in there. So I'll just kind of distribute them here and there to kind of figure out how I want things to go. So once I've determined where I want which page, the next thing I need to do is figure out the size of my journal. So I'll look at my pages, I've got them all stacked together, and what I'm going to do is pull out my paper cutter and cut the chipboard that's going to be my cover. So what I like to do is, since I don't have a lot of things sticking out, I don't have to worry about going too far as far as measurement is concerned outside of my journal, but I do want a little bit of space. And so I will line this up on my paper cutter and I like to give about a half an inch from the pages on the opening and then I like to go ahead and cut this. So I know that it looks like it is five and three quarters inch wide. So, Never mind, I changed my mind. I need to figure out how tall the journal is going to be because I need to cut that first on my chipboard or I end up with wrong measurements. So if I look at this, it looks like eight and a quarter. Gives me a little wiggle room, but I'm going to go ahead and go up to eight and a half tall. That's too far, so I'm going to go between eight and a half and eight and a quarter, whatever that measurement is. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. And that's how tall my cover is going to be. So I like to take my chipboard and cut this as one size all the way down. And then I'll cut the next one because I think, is this long enough? Actually, yeah, I need a scrap piece. got a little scrap piece that I need to cut the same height and then I'm going to cut it at one and a half inches which will give us a nice spine width so other elements could be added to this journal later. So now that I've got the height and I remember that I want it to be five I believe three quarters so we'll just confirm that by laying this in here. Yep, that gives me a little space there. So then I'll cut two pieces that are the height by the width of my journal. So again, I go about a quarter of an inch, and if I put this on either side of my pages, you can see I have a nice gap here in the front, and then I have just a little bit of a gap at the top and the bottom. So not much, but just enough to protect the pages. All right, for my inside covers, I like to go ahead and get those cut now so I have it ready. And I'm dropping stuff, that happens. And I've picked a pale pink, that's gonna go on my inside. So I need to measure how much this t is going to be on the inside. So I think if I go to eight and a quarter, eight and a quarter tall and I'll cut this off these are going to be my cover piece, uh, inside cover and this is going to be my inside spine piece I'm also cut it at the same height I'm gonna go ahead and leave it wide it's okay if it's a little wider than necessary and then looking at how wide my page needs to be I did it at five and three quarters so I'm gonna go down to five and a half and cut this into five and a half. Basically, it's a quarter of an inch shorter than what I made for the cover. So the next thing I do when I'm doing a fabric junk journal is I find my fabric and open it up. And because I have a limited area to cut, I fold it so that the salvage to salvage is together and then where the middle of the fold is matching the salvage. And if I look at my junk journal covers, I know that I want them about an inch 
taller than my cover inside pieces. So I'll go in here and I will measure down about an inch down. So if we count this out, I don't know if you can see, can't really see up there. Let me scoot it up just a little bit. You should be able to see that, yes. So if I cut this right about 10 inches, that will give me enough to fold over on my cover. So I'm just gonna cut a strip that's 10 inches long. And then I'll open this up and find the center. I'm gonna cut it apart because I'm gonna use these pieces for making a pocket. So that's just cutting it in half. So now I have another piece I can use on another journal. So then I'll lay this back out again and I'll lay my chipboard pieces on here. And I'm not really measuring, but I just know because I've done it, I want it an inch taller than what the inside pieces are going to be. And I'll just go down here on the side and cut off, leaving about an inch. Sometimes I get lucky and the piece of fabric that is left will be wide enough to go on the inside and this is going to work. So what I'll do is slide this out of the way for a moment. So I'll line this up on the center where I want it to cut. And I'm going to cut this in half. All right, now that I've got my pieces of fabric cut, I've got my cover, chipboard, and cardstock cut, I can start putting this journal together. Now what I like to do is figure out where the center of my fabric and journal ratio is, and then I'll use Aline's Tacky Glue. I will tell you this, that if you use a lot of glue, it will bleed through the fabric. So you wanna use a surface that is okay to glue upon, to clean up. You do not wanna glue on paper with the fabric because it'll stick to the paper and you'll have a mess. Ask me now how I know how. <laughs> so I just use Aline's Tacky Glue and make a small bead all the way around on this chipboard and a little zigzag back and forth and then I'll place this down in between the chipboard pieces but I want to leave a little bit of a gap not a whole lot but enough that when you open and close your page you're not getting a bound up mess glued this one down now I'll glue the last one I'm just using a bone folder to help smooth that glue out. It kind of presses it. You don't want to do it on the fabric side because it'll cause the fabric to wrinkle, but if you do it on the chipboard side, it seems to work pretty good. All right, the next thing is to start folding this over. So I'm just going to put a little glue across this triangle corner and I'll fold it up and I'll do that on all four corners. And now I'll fold in the sides and the top. And I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to put a bead of glue, go down, make a little zigzag, and then fold it over. So there is the beginnings of my journal cover. I'll let this set and dry for a few minutes before I sew on it. You don't have to sew on it, but I like to sew on it. So I'm going to set this aside and work on the inside portion. So I've got some distressed ink here and the two inside pieces. I know that I'm going to put fabric on one side, so I'm going to round the corners on the opposite side. And that'll give it a nice finish at the top. So then I take distress photo, distress ink vintage photo, and I'm gonna go on the top and the bottom of the spine piece and then around most of the three sides that will be exposed. Now for the fabric pockets to work, they need to be able to fit over this piece of cardstock. So you can kind of see it does fit, but I want a finished edge or somewhat finished edge. And so I do a faux finished edge. What I'll do is I'll use glue stick 
and I will glue across the edge and that will be just enough to tack this in place so I can take it to a sewing machine and sew it down. And I'll do that on this side. I'm going to go off camera. I've shown how to do this in other videos if you need to know. I believe the Dragonfly Journal and the Let It Snow Winter Wonderland Journal shows how I sew on this. But I'm going to do a zigzag stitch here, here. I'm also going to do a zigzag stitch on the top and the bottom of this piece of paper and I'll be right back. Alright, all my pieces to start with have been sewn. Now it's time to put the pocket onto the cardstock. And I find that if I flip it over to the back side and adjust it so it's somewhat in the center, and then I use some glue stick, so I'll go in here and glue the corner first with the glue stick. And I'm doing it with the glue stick because it dries fast and you don't need a lot just to tack it into place temporarily. So I did the corners, so now I'm going to go down the sides and fold that over. And then I'm going to line up the next page. matching the same height as the other that way they match because there's nothing like putting it together and if you look at it it's all wonky so I try to put it as straight as possible as I can I think I got it and we'll do the same thing on this side next what I'm going to do is go back to my sewing machine I'm going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around it's been long enough that my cover should be somewhat dry, so I'm going to stitch all the way around the outside edge. So I've stitched all the way around the outside edge. I've got this image that's also from Calico Collage that I want to use on the cover. So I'm just kind of looking at this to try to see if I want to trim it somewhat square-ish. So I've cut it at four and a half inches which is kind of square and I like it I think because I get more of the roses over here and I didn't really care about this part this is the journal kit cover that you're supposed to print full sheet but I print it as two five by seven images so that I could get a smaller image for the cover and you can see some of the fabric since I've used quite a bit of peach, I found this piece of cardstock that I think would be good for the cover. So all I'm going to do is just cut enough of this to make a frame to go around this image. So I'll make it five inches. About five and a five and a half, I think. Yeah, that gets me good. I'm going to use my Distress ink and go around the edges of this. I think I want to corner around it because I think that will give it a softer look. I'm going to use a little bit of glue stick to just hold this in place so I can take it to my sewing machine and sew around the outside edge. I'll just trim off the threads that are here. It's okay if they're a little long, but I don't want them crazy long. And then I will find the center of my journal cover where I want to place this and I'm going to glue it down. Now I've got my inside pieces and it's time to adhere those down. So what I'll do is find the center of the journal, then add some glue to the back side of this piece. And then I try to make sure I put some in the creases as well. And then line this up from top to bottom and adhere it down. Again, I'll use my bone folder to kind of help spread that glue and get a good stick. Next, I'll slightly bend this to find where my 
crease is going to be here in the fold and kind of crease it with my bone folder and if it lifts up I press it back down I'll do the other side and then this is important turn this cover over and make sure you have it right side up and then flip it so that you know where the pockets are going to fall and they're the right way the inside covers and then I'm going to use Adeline's tacky glue and adhere this down. When I place this piece on, I try to make sure that the top and the bottom match as much as possible. I make a template, and I show this in another video, that fits into my junk journals. I figure out where the center is, and I'll place it in here. And I use my awl to punch, punch holes. This is the Tem Tonic Studios Tim Holtz craft pick. And so I've got it marked which is the top and which is the bottom. And I find the center. Make sure that it's in the center. And then I'm going to poke nine holes in the cover only. And if I need to, I'll make the holes just a little bit bigger. Make sure you don't poke yourself because this craft pick is very sharp. And then I close this up. So my cover has the holes placed in it, but I need to do the same for my journal pages. I've got them all grouped together, but what I need to make sure before I punch holes is that I have these balanced out, even, if pages are shorter than others, they're in the center if that's what you want, or however you want them. You just want to line them all up. And then once I have them all lined up, I'll use giant paper clips to hold it in place while I'm punching holes and attaching it to the cover. All right, I've got all the pages bundled together and lined up the best that I want them to be and I've got my fun foam laid out here again I'm going to lay my template it folds in half and I'm going to push it into the center of my pages and I will poke three holes down what is going to be the center of the fold here one two Three. You want your pages at a V so that they nest together. All right. I'm going to do that on the other two. Now I'm going to determine which signature I want where. I think this will be in the front, this will be in the middle, and this will be in the last. Sometimes I plan it that way and sometimes it just comes together that way. The next thing I do is you need some wax linen thread. I prefer it because it doesn't stretch and it stays really strong. And I cut it to be at least three lengths of the page. So one, two, and three. And I'll need three of these because I've got three signatures. So I'll just use that first one as a guide and fold this over. And then I'll cut it. And then that way I know I have more than enough to get done. I use a book binder's needle. These are a heavier needle than say a yarn needle. You can sometimes find these as darning needles. They have a smaller opening up here. I like to start with my center signature so I'll just open this up, find the center and poke the needle right down through the center and then into the book spine. Now we're on the outside. So I'll pull up some thread, try not to pull all of it through. And I'm gonna go to the top hole on the cover and I'm gonna match up to the pages underneath. I'm gonna get this where you guys can see it. So I'm matching up there. Pull the thread. Hang on to this tail so it doesn't pull through. And then while you're holding this one up, pulling it somewhat tight, 
go back down through the center. Should go quite easily if you've got it all lined up because we've already made the hole big enough for the needle. So we're pulling this thread out to the front and we're going to go to the other hole on the opposite side. And then through the book pages. And then I'm going to slip the needle under this first stitch, if you will, and pull it down. And I like to pull them in opposite directions and then check to see if they're tight on the inside as well as the outside. And if they are, then I'll tie a square knot. So that's just going once and then twice. And then I'll cut these off. I'm not going to show it in this video, but I usually uh, glue little things on here. I think this time I'm going to use butterflies. So I can take these out and set them aside and I'm going to continue the same process with the other two signatures. Since this journal isn't really fluffy I'm not going to put a closure on here but I could slip a ribbon under here and just tie it shut that way but I think it sits rather nicely and will be really pretty. So I'll do a quick flip through. I may come back later and alter this. So check the photos to see if I alter this any. So I've got the Calico Collage Fairy Garden images and I used fabric on the cover and I just love this little fabric that I found at Hobby Lobby. You can't really see this little grid probably but it's gold on here. It's a not gold foil, I don't know what you call it, but it's a pretty gold. So I may come back and add some gold on here. And then I have my inside pocket, and I have some extra journaling cards that I'm just going to stick in these pockets. So these are just pieces that were left over from making the inside pieces, and I'm just going to stick them in this pocket. And I'll stick some in the back pocket. And then as I flip through, I'll find a home for this. In fact, I'll just put it right here on the front. So this is part of the Calco Collage digital kit. I'm going to add a little distressed ink on it. And I'm going to attach it to the front inside cover with an altered paper clip that I made. And now you can see the stenciling and the stamping that I did. This is where I've added a napkin on both sides. And this is smooth, so you, can tell, you can't tell the difference between the two. So it's not like my finger's catching on that napkin. It's really well done. And then here is a little journaling spot on top of some graph paper. More of the calico collage images. It's a little tuck spot journaling cards in here, also from Calco Collage, Calco Collage, some stamping. I just added some random things because it is a junk journal, so you're going to have random things here and there. A little notepad I made. And I have videos showing how I put all these pages together. A little envelope. There's nothing inside, but there is a journaling card on the tuck spot on the envelope. Put washi tape up here. Some of the elements from Calco Collage and things that I made. Here's another journaling card that I made. This is a, another image from the Calco Collage. This page is a map that I painted and on this side I attached a napkin 
so it gives it a whole different look. I used some acrylic paint and made pockets. This envelope opens up so I can stick my hand all the way to the other side. So you can put a bigger sheet of paper across there if you want. And then I made these little journaling cards. This is one from the Calico Collage. It's like a library cards. It's a different kit. And then she's got another pocket space here. Oh, we'll just put this scrap in there. More of the journaling cards, same as I was on the other side. Stamping. Another tuck spot. Lots of places to write. I like to do that in my journals. Just have space to write. The journal card over here. You used a book page and painted it. And then this I painted over another map. And then this is a pocket that I made that has space. And then this is a little envelope that has journaling cards inside of it. And this tucks under the domino image that's also from Calico Collage, their journaling card. And this is a little spot too, if you have more papers you wanna stick in there. This is an envelope that has a couple of journaling cards inside. Coloring book page. And then I just grabbed a few things that were left over and stuck them in there. So there is my fairy garden junk journal, a tutorial on how to put the cover together and how I spray the pages with Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends so others can see it and learn and be inspired. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Check the description box for links to Calico Collage's image as well as the Tattered Angels and inks that I use in this journal. And if you have any questions or comments that you want to make, go ahead, use that comment box down below. You can also check the description box for connector links to connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Pinterest. I don't remember. There's a bunch. <laughs> and I want to say thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. This will be available in my shop. So go ahead and check out the description box for a link to this journal in my shop. Like I said, I'm probably going to add some more stuff to it, but I was pretty much done with the tutorial portion of it. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a fabulous day. Bye.